So if the bound, if the if the hill is a, as a young person who's still developing, what are some things or some areas in which we're developing still? Maturity. And what do we mean by maturity? Like the way you act and like the way you handle things. Okay. Responsibility. Yeah. Responsibility. There's certainly something there for responsibility. The way you view the world. Okay. And what shapes that? What shapes responsibility? Uh, the view of the world. How we view the world. Experience perspectives. Yeah. That's a big one. It's going to be experience. Experience is a, is a really big thing. Um, I hate saying things like, you'll understand when you're older. Because that's usually just a cop-out. That's usually someone who doesn't want to explain what they're, what they're really thinking or they can't explain their position. So then they just kind of shuffle it off onto you and go, well, you can't understand it. By and large, you can understand things. You just have to take the time to think about them. It's kind of like, um, I was in a class recently, again, not my class, and some students were, were complaining about how their parents will tell them no, and they'll ask why, and what do parents say oftentimes in response? Because I said so. Okay. All right, so what do you, I, I, I guess in that kind of a case, what is the parent teaching you? There is something positive, maybe, that, that you're being taught from that. To accept the answer that your parents are saying. Yeah, to accept, the, yeah, to accept the answer that you're being given. Sometimes in life you can't understand the answer that you're being given. And sometimes in life you can understand it. Most of the time you can understand it. So I'm not saying it's a good blanket um, approach to things. But I mean, if you've got like a, a five-year-old and they keep asking why, 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 you could eventually want to end that just by saying, oh, because I said so. And when you're five years old and you hear that, you go, good reason <laughs> because the authority figure just told you and then your parents they're human beings as well they go well that worked and then when you're eight years old because I said so and you're still kind of like all right I'm getting less okay with it but okay and then when you're 14 and you're like how come because I said so that's stupid and the parents are thinking like hold on that that's worked my whole life and that was good enough for me at, at that age you think that because I said so was good enough for them? And they're just, probably not. Probably not. But but you know we have a way of, of glorifying ourselves. Like I told you guys when I was in high school, what it was like. I was respectful towards my teachers. Prices were reasonable. Politicians were honorable. Yeah. We walked to school in the snow. What the hell? Uphill. Well, and walking home, it was uphill also. Yeah, because you know, things were harder back then. <laughs> in other words, I mean, none of that. None of what I just told you was true. I, I, I was not necessarily respectful. I, I gave my drama teacher a Vietnam flashback and he retired. Oh, <laughs> true story. Wait, we, we really did do that. Yeah, we thought it was funny because we found out that he had a lot of uh, PTSD stuff from Vietnam. And so we were working in the theater. We thought, I mean, this took us weeks to put together. We put together an audio track of, uh, we had friends who spoke Vietnamese. And we, we actually separated out digitally so that you would hear the voices coming from different speakers throughout the throughout the, um, the theater, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the theater. And we uh, put in uh, jungle noises and all kinds of stuff like that. And we locked all the doors from the outside so he couldn't get out. We just shut the lights off. And we basically made like stuff going off, explosions, yeah. like lights going off. And the guy completely freaked out and he retired in the, in the, in the middle what of the recording. Uh, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong for us to do. But God damn, it was funny. <laughs> now, I don't know. You did the school favor. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could sit there and say, oh, what was he doing teaching kids in the first place? He was fine. It, was, it really was our fault. And, but, you know, so this is why sometimes I sit there and I'll ask you guys, like, like you know, what in the hell is your problem? I'm asking you. <laughs> I want you to think about it. I'm not, I'm not chastising you. I'm thinking, I want you to think about it. It's like, how do you know I'm not really angry at you? Anybody know? You get Diet Coke. My Diet Coke. No, and I'm cussing. If I cuss, I'm not really angry at you. Because it's designed to get your attention. If I'm, if I'm not cussing, I'm quiet. That's when I'm actually upset. So you haven't seen it yet. I hope not, ever. <laughs> but it's, really, it's, it's a point of view reflect. I, I, I almost sit there and wish that somebody grabbed 15 year old me and been like, seriously, Scanlon? A Vietnam flashback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the man goes out and fights for his country. Oh man, why do you have to do this to me? And it, and it forced me to, to, to think about these things, I, I might have approached it very differently. Um, or maybe it's the kind of thing where I have to look back on it 20 years later and go, 
that sucks, man. <laughs> I mean, that guy could be in a nursing home today, just like, you know, rocking still for all I know. I have no idea what happened to the dude after that. Um, but I know he'd been teaching long enough that he was able to retire. It wasn't a responsible thing to do. It certainly wasn't mature, but it was, it took experience for me to be able to look back on that and go, that was a bad idea. And I mean bad in the sense of how it made another person feel. Not in the sense of it being, it was not, it's not any less funny to me. I, could, I, I still sit there and laugh at it. And I go, <laughs> but I laugh at it and go, that's messed up. You know, like a lot of good jokes begin this way, right? I'm sorry, end that way, right? Oh my God, that's messed up. But we're laughing. Just because it's serious doesn't mean it's not funny. Just because it's funny doesn't mean it's not serious. So if we can think of that then, still developing view of the world, responsibility, maturity, then what is the mountain? Older people. People with more experience. People with experienced people. <laughs> <laughs> was it the same thing three different ways? <laughs> we, we just reordered the words. <laughs> Experienced person who? Older. So maybe this is a person who is maybe not entirely developed, but is far more developed, you might say. So we'll just say more developed. I'll add the word far in there as well because that matters. And what would that person kind of look like? I don't mean physically, but what are some characteristics of that person? So when we say like maturity, responsibility, do the world, let's try to be specific with that. What are some things that this will look more like? Wise. Wise. <coughs> and what do you mean by wise? Um, well, actually, sorry, what's the difference between wisdom and, and, and intelligence? Wisdom is more... wisdom from experience, you know? <laughs> yeah, but what is it, though? Um, when we say someone's wise, what do you mean by that? Life experience. Life. Mm. When they have a lot of knowledge. <laughs> no. <laughs> so then, but we're drawing a distinction between wisdom and knowledge. Can a can a person be fifteen and be knowledgeable? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Asterisk about certain subjects, but the point, but the but the truth is, is that if you're fifteen years old, when would you think about a subject? When would you have started studying the subject? What age? Five. Five. So let's say you would start studying physics at five. <laughs> <laughs> or studying anime at five, whatever the case is. So by the time you're, you're 15, now you've got 10 years of experience. Now, there are people who, of course, have been studying a subject longer than you've been alive at that point. So you might be knowledgeable for being five years old or for being 15 years old. You might be wise for that. Like one of the really hard things I have to tell students is keep in mind that that every teacher you have knows more than you, generally. Not about, maybe you know way more about a certain subject, but every teacher you have is, is far older and has gone through university, so they've gotten at least, I mean, I, I, so I stumble when I say that, because I think of some of the people I know who teach here, and I'm like, oh my God, they have a degree. But it's true, they do. Which means, which means that not necessarily that they're smart, but they had to know something to get through there. And that's one of those things, by the way, that I hope would motivate you. If any of you guys want to go to college, or if any of you are thinking like, I, I just couldn't do it. Not that you don't want to, but you just doubt your abilities to. Think about every teacher you've ever had. Think about every substitute teacher you've ever had. You know that one substitute who couldn't turn the projector on? Yeah. They have a college degree. <laughs> yeah. That one, that, that one, I mean, just think about some of the, 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 the lamest stuff that you've seen from subs. Keep in mind, every single one of them has a college degree. So if you think you can't do it, you should stop at some point and go, huh, that person has a college degree. I think I can do it. <laughs> I was telling this story, this is an aside, sorry. I just reminded me, I told a story yesterday to a class about a guy who used to go here. Um, I had him as a 10th grader. Um, he, was, he, was, he was autistic, but like on the spectrum, like way on the spectrum. And he talked like John Wayne. So he would talk like this. And I remember when he was first in the class, he, um, back, obviously we got 2.30 at the time, so 2.35 at the time, he'd raise his hands and he'd say, uh, Mr. Skellen, I have to leave. And I'd look up the bell, I'm like, no, dude, it's 2.30. You leave at 2.38 today. We got 2.38. And he says, well, I have to go. I said, well, you're not going anywhere. You're going to sit right there. And he's like, I have to leave. <laughs> I said, I told you, man, you're not going anywhere. And he says, okay, I'm going to get my stuff and go now. I said, dude, you stand up for me? This is my first year as a teacher. I said, you stand up, bro, I'm bringing you down like a lion on a gazelle. I promise you. And he looks at me. And then he starts to panic. Turns out he didn't like to be touched. 
So just the f idea that I told him I was gonna bring him down, and he like I guess it turns out later I found out he likes watching uh, nature stuff. So he knew exactly what I was talking about, the lion bringing down a gazelle. <laughs> I never knew this, <laughs> this is how I found out. And so he starts to, to sit there, he says, I'm sorry, he starts to panic at his desk, he's like sitting there, he's rocking back and forth, he starts to pick the desk up and bounce with it, and I turn to everybody else, because collectively, they've been in school, you know, for a while, they probably have more knowledge than I do, it's my first year as a teacher, it's my first few weeks, and I look at everybody, I'm like, <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> well, anybody know this guy? And they're like, oh yeah, he gets like that. I'm like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> all right, well, team, all right? <laughs> what do we do here? And they're like, maybe you should let him go. I go, in my head, I'm like, I can't let him win. He's not going anywhere. Forget that idea. And so he's just sitting there going, I, I have to go. I, I have to leave. And he starts to, like, grab his backpack, then puts his backpack down, and he starts to, and then he starts to turn in his desk and everything. And I'm just thinking, like, man, this guy's going to, you know what? Forget it. Pep talk. I go to him, I go, bro. Everybody in here is looking to you for leadership right now. You need to buck up. <laughs> Just coaching baseball time. What do you want me to do? <laughs> My background's in sports. I'm going to go get them. And so that didn't help. Right? Surprise, surprise. And then finally, uh, at 2.30, you know, 2.30 because 2.35, and then the school nurse comes in, and he was this real lackadaisical guy. He comes in and says, hey, I'm going to need to get so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, please. You know? And I'm like, he's over here freaking out, dude. What's the deal? He's like... I forgot to send an email. He's, a, he, he, he's on a, he, obviously he's on the spectrum. He's on a bus that leaves at 2.35. So he has to be released every day at 2.30 so he can make it to the bus by 2.35. I'm like, well, I wish you'd send me that email. And he's like, yeah, we run behind on these things sometimes. <laughs> so throughout the year, man, I mean, the next time I felt terrible because he was just having a complete meltdown. And I was just like, hey, bro, it's, you know, it's you know, 2.29, you can go ahead and get out of here. And he's like, it's not 2.30 yet. Because <laughs> he only leaves at 2.30. Okay. And he gets to the bus. And then I remember, I'd be, I'm in the middle of something. And I would, I would say something like, if you only remember one thing I ever teach you guys, let it be this. This is your key to the meaning and the purpose of your life. Scallon, I have to go. <laughs> it's 2.30. Uh, yeah, bro, go ahead. Okay. Bye. <laughs> you guys have to walk out. We're gonna get a help. By the way, if you don't see the humor in that, there's something wrong with you. And I'd be like, he's making fun of him. I'm not making fun of him. He, if, what, what that, I'm telling you what he did. And if that's funny, then that's funny. It's not making fun of anybody. It's, it's laughing at what someone does. People do things all the time that we don't think are supposed to be funny. There's a difference between making fun of somebody and, and just kind of saying, hey, here's what happened. And what happened was, was really goddamn funny. <laughs> Sometime I'll tell you guys the story about a friend of mine who was on an airplane with a Special Olympic team. And they, they, got, you know, and, and, uh, they got diverted to land in Denver because the, the uh, engines were going out. I'll tell you that story. That thing's goddamn funny. And if you can't laugh at that, man, I, I question you don't laugh at anything at all. already you loved it all your life. So, <coughs> this was a guy, by the way, who, if you gave him some, some facts, he memorized everything you'd say to him. So, you know, wisdom. But is that, I'm sorry, but knowledge, sorry, but is that wisdom? Good judgment. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> I know, we just sit there and we all go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know what to say. You know, guys, it is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah it is what it is. You're right. All right. <laughs> So wisdom is knowing what to do in certain circumstances. Think of it this way. Uh, knowledge is to know that, that tomato is a fruit. Okay? Knowledge is to know that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. So knowledge is, is knowing stuff. Wisdom is knowing how to employ what you know. And a lot of times that comes from experience because things will sound good in theory. Things will sound good in theory. It's like I remember like watching um, uh, a friend of mine loves NASCAR. And so what we say about NASCAR, how hard is it? Just drive faster, right? <laughs> Wisdom is knowing that, that you don't just drive faster. And that there's no such thing in life as just or all you have to do is. So I get my gym, we'll, we'll be training in, in, so in jiu-jitsu, people will say stuff like, dude, all you have to do is stop right there. You know it's bullshit. Listen, just stop right there. You know it's bullshit. And whatever thing you're interested in, then you know that's the case. Um, if you are, if, you're tra if, if anybody here does, uh, does track, all you have to do is run faster, right? No. Is it, what, it's more than that? Oh, man. I mean, you're breathing. 
Oh, what do you mean? Oh, that's, that's too complex. Just run faster. Just don't breathe. Wisdom is knowing that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just don't breathe. <laughs> Breathing is a problem. Oh, if it's a problem, then just don't do it. <laughs> so knowledge is, is to know that you have to run faster. Wisdom is knowing how to do those kinds of things. That there's breathing involved, there's form involved, there's technique involved. So maybe a big part of being far more developed is to have wisdom. What else? Yeah. Uh, so you met, um, like maybe the hill is like a small like nation, and the mountain is a much stronger nation. I was thinking about it that way. Something like talking to first period. What do you mean by that? Um, like for example, um, like I uh, saw that he was a, a Cuban poet, so he was from Cuba, and that they were pretty much like colonized by Spain. Spain is a stronger nation than Cuba, but they revolted against them, and they won. So I kind of would see it that way. Okay. So we're going to end up making an analogy for all of that. So Cuba being a, a stronger, a smaller nation, you think of that as being the hill, and then you think of Spain as being the mountain. And there's certainly something to that, by the way, with what with the time he's talking about. His, um, did anybody look up anything about this guy? It's too yeah. bad. He's dead, right? He is. He is. But he's got some wisdom. He's got some wisdom. And this is part of the, of the issue, by the way, that we're talking about. He's saying that we kind of live in this time when you've got people who are immature, who, who, sorry, who, who lack maturity, lack responsibility, and lack experience, who then instead, though, will judge the people who are wise, have life experience, and so forth. If someone is, is older than you, but they know more than you, they might know more generally. Maybe you know more about a certain subject. Like, you guys ever see that TV show, um, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's such a stupid show. First off, a lot of, it turns out that the kids were given the answers a lot of times beforehand. But also, if you take a fifth grader, um, I don't know what age they do it at. Uh, can any of you guys name the capitals of all the states? Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. You would, we would definitely call on you. Yeah. <laughs> Teach them a lesson. We all stand behind you. <laughs> but I, uh, I could, when I was like in fifth grade or sixth grade, I remember that being part of a test, and I remember specifically I got 100% on that test. I couldn't do it now. So just because a fifth grader knows more about the, the, the capitals of all the states than you, it doesn't mean that they're smarter than you. It means that they happen to be more familiar with this one thing. There's an old saying that like you've um, you've learned more about a so you have forgotten more about a subject than somebody else will ever even know. Like you might say, I've forgotten more math than you'll ever know. It's a way of saying I know way more than you do. And this is a really hard thing for us to get our heads around. Because either from ego, we don't want to accept that older people know more than us, or we don't want to accept that we're not more mature than they are. You might be, by the way. You might be. But I guess we can look at our lives. Some of you guys, man, you're like Whatever you are, like 18 going on 80. You know, I look and I, I look at you and I, I look in your eyes and I'm like, dude, this person's way older than, 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 their, than, their, than their age. You know, just you've heard of the, the, the term before an old soul. Some of you guys are old souls. Some of you guys, I look at you and I go, how are you doing? You know, I go, great. And I look in your eyes and I go, dude, this person's in pain, man. I can see it. You can see the suffering in people's eyes a lot of times. Um, and again, I'm never going to be that person who will come over to you. Going Hope they can give you something to laugh about once or twice during the class to make it worthwhile to show up. You know, and maybe a little bit of knowledge here and there. But it's hard for us to kind of get our heads around the idea that other people might be more mature than us, more responsible than us, and be more experienced. The problem is that sometimes we treat this as a as a as a rite of passage. In other words, once I get older, oh, good example. A um, friend of mine, he's an old dude. This guy's old. He's uh, he's about to turn 28 next month. This guy's old. Right? And he goes to, he just finished a program at UTI, the, 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 auto, the auto mechanic tool, and he finished top of his class. So now he's he got a job, um, he's training for Porsche right now. And it's great, because he was a student. And that's how I met him, actually. He's just in my first year at He's a terrible student. He was, a, he was this big guy who just, we called him, um, he, he, he later on came to be called Wreck-It Ralph, because he would just wreck things not even mean to. He was that guy who was like so big that he would just like turn like slime into desks and break them, you know, stuff like that. And so anyway, he um, school was just not for him. And in fact, most of life wasn't for him. He went to the military, he, you know, because he wanted to blow stuff up. He screwed that up. He went and got he got out and he got you know the guy goes to college and he screwed that up. He got married twice, screwed both of those up. But 
he can fix your shit. <laughs> and he is really good at, at auto mechanic stuff. And so I talked to him now because he lives in Texas, but he's in California now and he's training for Porsche. And you know what he complains about with his program? The damn kids. He's like, these kids, Scanlon. I'm like, really? What are you talking about kids? Like, well, this one kid, his kid's like 22 years old. I'm like, oh, yeah, not like us, right, old timer? He guy's like six, you know, five years older than them. And he's complaining about the damn kids. And he's like, I know how stupid it sounds because they're only five years younger than me, but I think that that's a big five years. Like, there's a lot to happen. Like, of course you think so. And then 10 years from now, you look back on it and go, man, it wasn't those five years. It's the 15 years since then. That's what really makes a difference. In other words, as we get older, we start to think that these things happen to come along with us just because we get older. But they don't. I'm sure some of you are more mature than your parents. Some of you, I'm sure, are less mature than your seven-year-old cousins. Some of you are, uh, have, have very little sense of responsibility. Some of you guys, I'm sure, I, I, guys, I think, well, I don't want to call anybody out, but some of you, you, I look at you, I think that you, you look to me like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. You know? Um, some of you have, have seen way more, but you haven't seen everything. You haven't seen as much as you're going to. And some of you have never seen much more than just the walk or the ride from home to school and back every day. And so, wisdom is something that will come with all of this. And this becomes a very difficult thing to overcome. If you, if you develop yourself as somebody who really is wise, and I mean really is wise, you're really focused on that wisdom. And some of you, I'm sure, are that person, um, you don't have to raise your hand, but I, I wonder if any of you are that person who your friends come to you for wisdom all the time. Because for some reason they think you've got some stuff figured out. There's just something about the way that you talk, the way that you carry yourself, that you, they, they just think you're wise, and maybe you're that person who people come to for, for advice. Some of you, hopefully as you, as you grow older, you become far more responsible. And I mean like you pick up the heaviest goddamn things that you can find in life and you carry them forward willingly. You willingly take on uh, responsibility because you understand that at the end of responsibility is accomplishment and meaning and purpose. That a life without responsibility, as much as we think like, wow, that'd be so wonderful, I promise you it would not be wonderful for you. It would be terrible for you because it would rob you of any opportunity to lead a meaningful life. You might think, like, well, you know, maybe there's other, another way of finding meaning in life. Turns out there's not. You know, um, in the fourth quarter, we're going to read an essay called um, "The Case for a Tragic Optimism." This guy, uh, uh, Victor Frankl, who was a concentration camp survivor, he became a psychiatrist, and he writes this essay that we're going to read, and hopefully you'll remember this when we get there. But he talks about how over the course of his psychiatric um, practice, he had dealt with 30,000 patients who were suicidal. 30,000. He did the calculations on it. He worked in a hospital specifically for, for, for suicidal patients. And um, he said that the one thing that seemed to drive people towards being suicidal more than almost anything else was a lack of employment, not having a job. And so when it, some of you who have parents or, or, or family members or friends who are unemployed right now and they seem like they're going through a lot, I promise you they're going through more than they even show probably. Because when you don't have a, a routine to go to every day, even if you hate your job, it, it, gives a, it gives you an opportunity to go and do something that's meaningful. Even if you hate the job, at least it's meaningful that you're able to provide for your family. Even if you don't like the job, at least you're providing something meaningful to society maybe. You know, even if like, for example, think about the, uh, the people who drive the trash truck, people pick up the trash. Without, you, you might look at them and be like, oh, I hate that job. Go back to what Mike Rowe was saying. Our society would fall apart and we would get diseases and die by the thousands if, if, if not for those people doing that job. Do you think there's meaning and purpose and something like that? that? If that person wakes up every day and just says, this sucks, I'm hauling trash. Fine. The person wakes up in the morning and says, well, I'm making a decent living doing this. And if I didn't do this, if no one did this, then we'd be back in the dark ages <laughs> sharing plagues. So it is necessary to remove this trash. You know, you can find meaning, you can find that purpose. But that's picking up the responsibility and driving forward with it. So what Frankel points out is that if you, if you take a person who's suffering this way from a lack of employment and all of the psychological things that go along with that, instead you get them uh, to volunteer somewhere, work at the, you know, the Boys and Girls Club to come down to the school and volunteer. You don't, they don't get any money out of it, but they report completely turning around becoming less suicidal and actually turning their lives around. They don't have any more money, they're still hungry, they still don't have all those things, but they have a meaning and a purpose, they have a responsibility. And that's the thing that gets us up in the morning. 
So if we're, if we're treating someone for depression, one of the first things that we check is, what's your schedule like? Do you, do you have a schedule or do you just go to sleep when you want, wake up when you want? And that turns out that that's a, a serious issue for people. Um, and then of course, you know, wisdom, uh, responsibility, and of course having a level of experience. And if you can be all of these things here, you become very difficult to overcome. But now imagine if you're this person where you've gained wisdom, you've picked up responsibility, you've taken, you've taken your life seriously, and you've gained experience in your life. And then you've got some... No, I won't even ask, whatever. And you've got some, some loser with curly hair and a jacket that's three sizes too big and a backpack falling down his asshole, and, and he's like, you don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, can you, imagine, you can imagine how, this, how it might make this person feel. But, having said that, this is so important. Wisdom is also being able to look at this person and not get angry with them, because that would be a, an attack on your character, I mean, an attack on your, um, your ego. Instead, just look at the person and just think like, no, I hear you, man. <laughs> maybe, I was, maybe you were the same way when you were that age, maybe you weren't. But it's the wisdom of just knowing they think that way because they don't have these things. And you can't anger a person into having those things. You need to start being wiser. <laughs> How? You know, it takes something to get there. They said you can't wake up and have this. You can't wake up and have this. You can't wake up and have this. You have to live a life that develops these things. And the problem is that when you develop these things, a lot of times, you're going to isolate yourself from everybody else. If you go off and you have experiences in life, and then you come back and try to talk about it, it's going to be very difficult for people to understand what you're talking about. And so uh, it's an ironic thing that the further along you go in your life and the more of a mountain that you make yourself, the harder it is for the hills in your life to relate to you. And unless we maintain this wisdom, it becomes difficult for the mountains to relate to, for you, to relate to the, to the hills around you in your life. And you're you at the risk of losing these people in your life. You know? And so we have to be careful as we become mountains. First off, we should probably endeavor to become one, but not, all, but not all of us do. And some mountains, of course, become stronger and wiser than others. And some hills, of course, are, are taller and shorter than others. But to understand that, we shouldn't look down. From here, we certainly have no business looking down on these mountains and the like. I met a dude yesterday, man. I went to go get my hair cut. And I have this friend. She owns a salon out in La Jolla. So she cuts my hair. I used to train her in, in, in Krav Maga Jiu Jitsu, so she cuts my hair for me. And she charges a lot, man. It's one, of those, it's one of those places, you know, they charge a lot for it. But she's just, she's, she's super sweet. She says, oh, no, I will not go. Just come and get your hair cut. She's French. And then I'll say, how much? Oh, every time I ask her, so what do I owe you? Oh, you still, you don't owe me anything. You are very nice. I'm like, oh. But she's charging like 100 bucks for a haircut. So I feel bad for her. Well, then by the same token, of course, I'd feel pissed off if I was paying 100 bucks for this. You know, it's like... If I had to pay hundred bucks, I would just shave it and go screw it, you know, save save uh, save some money every year. But anyway, I met this guy. She introduced me to him, and this guy's like in his late fifties, maybe, you know, maybe maybe early early sixties. And she she introduces me to him and says that he has three black belts in different martial arts. And you know, she's cutting his hair. She's finishing up with him. I go, wow, nice to meet you. And this is a guy that when he's talking to you, he looks at you. You know what I mean? How are you today? And then you're sitting there going like. Is this, is this guy studying me or does he want to fight? The answer is yes. He's just a very intense guy. And then when he leaves, she explains to me about how he's this extremely successful real estate developer. Of course, he's worth tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. And she's telling me that his wife died last year. So I'm like, oh, that's terrible. So he's probably looking for an heir, huh? Someone he can leave all that money to. <laughs> and she, she laughs and she's like, how old, how old is he? And I go, Late 50s, early 60s? And she says, he's over 90. And I go, wait, what? And she's like, he's over 90 years old. And there's no way. This guy got out of the chair, he said, he's a taller guy. He didn't get out of the chair, he got out of the chair, you know, everything went to leave. And she says that he goes and he trains martial arts six days a week. He just he trains one martial art for whatever it is, like three days, and another one for th another three days. God damn. Yeah, this guy's like, and I'm like, what the hell, man? And you look at this guy, and you go like, Okay, so, I mean, the martial arts he does, they're bullshit, whatever. But, he's better prepared to defend himself than most people. Does this guy have wisdom? Oh, yeah. Does this guy have experience? Oh, yeah. 
and he's got success. He has all of these things. That guy's a hell of a mountain. And it's funny, I just thought, like, you wouldn't know it from looking at the guy. And so I wonder how many times he's been looked down on by Hills, when this is a complete mountain of a man, you know? And I was giving her grief after him. Why didn't you tell me more about him while he was here? I want to talk to him more. And of course, in my head, I just thought, well, why would that have even mattered? Shouldn't you have just talk to him anyway? You know, then you would have found out for yourself. Nah, I got some more of this to do. I got some more of this to do. I guess I got some more of this to do. So the good news is that the still is in there, which means there's a hope and opportunity to get better. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism, critiques? Hmm. Happy Wednesday. Oh, it is Wednesday. So go talk to old people.